This video is going to be about the idea of power in physics, which has a pretty similar definition to our everyday use of the word power. In physics, power is a measurement of a change in energy per time, so it's a rate of change of energy per time. It's measured in units of watts, which actually just means joules per second, because again, it's energy per time. At like energy and work, power is a scalar. Power supplied to an object is also equal to the force applied to an object times the velocity of an object. The force times velocity definition of power isn't used quite as much as the energy per time definition, but it does come up every now and then, and in this video I'll show you why it looks the way that it does. Just as an example, you've probably seen that light bulbs are often labeled with the power that they use. For example, a 60 watt light bulb uses 60 joules of electric energy per second. So that's what a watt means. A watt is a joule per second. So a 60 watt light bulb uses 60 joules of electric energy every second. So if I write that equation, power is equal to the change in energy per time, we can see that a 60 watt light bulb will use 60 joules of energy in one second, or 120 joules of energy in two seconds, or 180 joules of energy in three seconds, or 240 joules of energy in four seconds. So power is a description of the rate of change of energy per time. Here's an example problem with this idea of power. How much energy will a 60 watt light bulb use if left on for 8 hours? So here I'm going to start by writing down my given variables, and I know that I'm given the power is 60 watts, and I'm also given that the time is 8 hours. And because the standard unit of time in physics is seconds, not hours, I'm going to need to convert that down to seconds. And when I do that, I find that this is 28,800 seconds and we're trying to find the change in energy of the light bulb. If power is change in energy divided by time, that also means that power times time equals the change in energy, which is what we're trying to find here. So plugging that in, 60 watts, which means 60 joules per second, times 28,800 seconds will equal the change in energy. So our final answer is 1,728,000 joules of electrical energy. So that's quite a bit of energy used in just one day by a 60 watt light bulb. Moving on to example problem number two, a car engine accelerates a 1,000 kilogram car from rest to 20 meters per second in four seconds. How much power does the engine use? So we're given time right off the bat, that's four seconds, and we're trying to find the power used by the car. But we're not given the change in energy here, so we're going to have to calculate that. I can see that the type of energy that's going to be involved in this situation is kinetic energy, because we're given the car's mass and the car's velocity. I can see that the type of energy that's going to be present in this problem is kinetic energy, because we're given the car's mass and the car's velocity. So I can calculate how much kinetic energy it starts with, how much kinetic energy it ends with, and the difference between those will be equal to the change in the energy. If it's starting from rest, it's just going to be one half times the mass times V squared, and V here is zero because it's not moving. So that's just zero joules. And the final kinetic energy of the car is one half times a thousand kilograms times 20 squared, which is equal to 200,000 joules. So the change in energy here is 200,000 joules. So we would say that the power is the change in energy over time, which means that it's equal to 200,000 joules over four seconds, which means that this car's engine has a power of 50,000 watts. Moving on to example problem three, a crane lifts a hundred kilogram crate straight up at a constant rate of five meters per second. How much power does this require? I'm actually going to solve this one in two different ways. The first way we'll use the power is equal to energy divided by time equation, and the second one we'll use the force times velocity equation. To solve it the first way, I'm going to need to know how much the energy is changing by, and since this thing is gaining potential energy, I'm going to need to know how much height it gains in how much time. And if it's going up at a constant rate of 5 meters per second, that means that it's going to go up 5 meters in exactly 1 second. So that's the height I can use and the time to calculate the change in energy and the time to find the power. So the time is one, and the starting potential energy of that box is just zero because it has a height of zero, and the final potential energy is going to be its mass times gravity times height, and its height is five meters, so multiplying that out gets me 4,900 joules, so the change in energy is 4,900 joules, and the power there is 4,900 joules divided by one second, which is equal to 4,900 watts. So that's the way of solving it with the change in energy over time equation. To use the force times velocity equation, I can see that the force of tension that will be required from the crane to lift this box at a constant rate is just equal to the force of gravity. It just has to balance out the force of gravity going down. So I can see that the force from the crane is 980 joules, and the velocity is 5 meters per second. Using that equation, power is equal to force times velocity. I just multiply out the force and the velocity, and I get the same answer as I got in the previous problem, 4,900 watts. This equation is meant to show you the connection between the two equations above my head. You can see that even though they're written differently, 
differently, they're actually implications of each other. If power is actually change in energy divided by time, that's also equal to the work done divided by time because work is change in energy. And because work is force times displacement, power is equal to force times displacement over time. And because displacement over time is equal to velocity, we can replace the displacement over time in that equation with velocity. So we just get force times velocity as another equation for power. And that's everything that you need to know about the definition of power.